Hotel, witnessing yet another innovation from Zimbabwe Online Zoo. Today we are joined, we are so much honored to be joined by the Zoo CEO, Mr. Danny Marangoli, talking briefly on the new excitement package that they are going to be offering as far as uh, the fiber market is concerned. And we are so much honored. So thank you for your time to just join our short economic YouTube video. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, briefly, I understand that today you've managed to aid in excitement uh, into the, the fiber market and as far as connectivity is concerned. I think for the benefit of our viewers, briefly, if you can just update them on what has been happening here today. Yeah, here today, we've been launching our new product, uh, which is called Basic Essentials, at uh, $39 a month. Mm -hmm. And basically, this is in response to the market, mm -hmm. who are demanding a lower entry package. $39 so, on fiber? On fiber. Real fiber. Yes, exactly. It's okay. the lowest uh, fiber-based internet in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. So they've been requesting uh, a lower package so they can also be connected. Okay. And as I enumerated in my speech, uh, internet has become a basic human right. So therefore, we at so feel it's our obligation as one of the leading ISPs in Zimbabwe to make internet accessible to every home in Zimbabwe. So the internet penetration uh, in Zimbabwe, fiber is only 1%. But total internet penetration in Africa is 26.5% compared to North America at 87.7. And the biggest hindrance and barriers to entry for a lot of people in countries like ours is cost. It has become very expensive to access internet and so forth. So we are also trying to make it accessible. So by bringing this uh, Fibronics package at $39, super fast, everywhere, we are hoping uh, to create a more inclusive. Who is your targeted market? Are you targeting the business or the home? No. Uh, we, are we, are we, we are targeting homes. Okay. We are targeting businesses have different packages. Mm -hmm. Yes, but uh, we are basically targeting Zimbabwe homes, okay. home users. Mm -hmm. well, well, home, which areas yeah. specifically are going to be able to? This may be the initial rollout of this package. Where initial which, rollout is everywhere in Harare, where we have our fiber, mm -hmm. Wayo, Utari, and we are rolling out a lot of other areas. So wherever we fiber, we can get connected. As I said, we are working with the Ministry of ICT. So that was uh, when we put fiber, we have to apply for waivers, we have to do a lot of permits to deal and so forth. Even sometimes to dig a little road, you know, come across the street, it, it can take months to get a thing. So we are trying to work in partnership with the Ministry of ICT and local council so that they can speed up the process. As, that's why we want them to understand that this is not only we cannot only do it ourselves. We need to do it in partnership with the ministry, with the city council, because it's all an inclusive exercise. So that was internet has become the biggest driver for economic growth in Zimbabwe. So when we all realize, and this also goes to the Zima city that says, you know, infrastructure development is part of it. So state fiber and so forth is part of the infrastructure development. And if you look at all the other economies in the first world, internet has been the biggest driver of economic growth. True, true. Yeah, great work there. I think we would also want to commend you on, on bringing, making, making the fiber dream a reality to most, to most people in Zimbabwe. So I think maybe the, the other issues on the technicality, how far it may supposed to be from the nearest uh, uh, fiber uh, fiber line for me, fiber paper line for me to be able to get this. How, how far should my house be like that? I think we are putting fiber everywhere, and uh, the only thing, if you have, uh, if you need to understand, to see if you can get fiber, the matter is you just call our office, we will send our site, people to do a site survey, and they will tell you if they can put fiber, one meters, or MPLS. But the most areas where it's RFS, which is uh, ready for service, you can, anywhere you are, they can just put the fiber. Yes. Okay, let's just talk a bit on the terms and conditions that we usually don't talk about. I, I want to know how far am I going to be eligible, eligible to be connected, especially on the distance uh, for, for the next connection, we, and how much is it going to cost me? Is it going to cost me an extra charge if I'm going to be 100 meters, one kilometer away from the no. next paper line? And no. Exactly that. How, how is it going to work out? It doesn't cost you any extra. Actually, if you move up a few packages up, we have free installation. For this package, the $39, the installation is only $49. Regardless no matter how far you are. No, there's, no matter how far you are. Just $49 installation charge. Our guys will come, dig in, and pull the fiber into your connectors. So yeah, it doesn't matter. We don't do it by distance. Okay. Yeah, it's just by home. If you have a home, wherever you are, with fiber, 
just forty nine dollars. How viable is this? I understand we, we are excited to get this users, but how viable is this going to be on your site as an ISP for you to be able, able to actually roll out five hundred and only forty nine dollars no matter how far the person is to the nearest. Yeah, we, we, we have made huge investment in infrastructure. Is it, you, as you understand, you know, you put an investment in infrastructure, you don't ex expect a return in a short time. So the return will be felt over time. Mm -hmm. Because that fiber is going to be there for years to come. Mm -hmm. So we, might, we don't have to do anything to it. Mm -hmm. Except some, sometimes, mm -hmm. maybe when it's uh, damaged, then when it's repaired, but it's underground. Mm -hmm. So the chances of that are very limited. So as, as we, it's, a cap, it's, it's a capital investment, okay. really. Mm -hmm. It's a capex. And we expect a return on it over years, mm -hmm. over years. But it's going to benefit a lot of people. It's going to benefit uh, the Zimbabwean economy, and uh, it's going to be a vibrant growth machine, growth for Zimbabwe. Our kids will be able to do school, research. Your know, business are going to be able to operate from home because they can access the internet. So, and my plea is to our peers in the in the internet industry mm -hmm. to also reduce your price so that you can have access for everyone. We are right now, we stand that this is you know, 1%. True. The sport as they say, but we need to put it up, you know. On, on, on another interest note, uh, I think it's always an ISP. The perception in Zimbabwe is that it's all is perceived to be much more bent to be providing service for the elite or the lower density. Are you going to be going to the high density also, or you're going to be continuing on the low density? How are you going to be rolling out this? And do you, do you have any areas that you know that you've already covered and those that you can actually promise and say you're going to be going through, especially with the high density? I mean, I know that you've been very much busy with the low density. Are you doing anything also for the high density? Yeah, we are. We are. Is I just took over in September mm -hmm. as the new CEO and so didn't have much publicity and so forth. But I've started creating awareness so that people understand what so I mean I didn't really know what so it was all about the mind. But uh, now we're making a concerted effort to make sure everyone knows what's all so even in the lower density server. We want to provide service. We have visa service where we don't have fiber. We have visa with WiMAX. So everyone can access. In the, in the rural areas, we have visa. We have other rural areas right now, farms that are connected to Zoom. So, so I, 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 are, are we going to be in fiber also in the high density of the ghetto? Or are we you know, a lot business? of this is going to be depending on the cost. Mm -hmm. It depends on the, what the cost is and what the uptake is. If we, we, because no matter when you go to a area, we do a sample. See how many people are there. How many people want it, and the results of the survey will determine whether we're going to an area or not. Because what's pushing me is, honestly speaking, at thirteen dollars per month, almost every Zimbabwean who's actually using it can actually afford to be to be to be, to be on uh, the so fiber optics. So that's our objective. That's mm -hmm. our objective. And if people want, we're going to roll out fiber. We already have uh, the infrastructure. We already have the equipment. We have invested all the money. So as soon as uh, you know, the city council can also help us speed up our payment applications, we can be your neighbor at any time. So it will also be good for our consumers to also lobby the council. The city council will say, the local council says, can you speed up the payments? We want fiber, we want internet in our homes. Because there's a travel around, a lot of people say, when are you coming to our neighbor? When are you coming so to what's, neighbor? what's really stopping you now to get into this neighborhood? It's a uh, payment. We have to do application for payments. With the local authorities. Where these payments and so forth. Yes, yes. You have to apply, then you get a payment, and then you start digging. Yeah, so there's a payment at every stage. And there's been a backlog. Like uh, our legal person said, we buy, you know, it's taking about a month to get payments and so forth. So if you consider the areas we want to bring into, the process needs to be reduced to at least two weeks or one week, definitely. And then that will speed up the process. People have to understand. Everyone, all stakeholders have to understand that this is not benefiting us all alone. It's benefiting the country as a whole. It's a good benefit for our consumers as well. And it's a reflection of the, your economy. If you look at countries that are connected to the internet, the economy is a bad thing. Yeah, it contributes a lot to towards exactly, the GDP. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So that's, that's our uh, objective. Get this thing going so that you know, our economy you know, give a boost to the economy. Okay. Hmm. You mentioned a very interesting point on other to a message rather to other ISPs that they should also try and lower down their prices to make it accessible. I think of interest is your connection with uh, Lego Telecom's ACO, Yes, of Does this 
not give you much of an advantage because you are, you are, you are directly connected to an internet service provider? Is, it, it, does this, if I have to change, rephrase the question, mm -hmm. does this, does I guess this make it much more of a fair competition? Will they be able actually to even match up this because you are directly linked to an IAP and some of these ISPs also are actually buying off from, from IAPs that are not necessarily linked to, but you are a, you are, you are linked definitely to, 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 to Lego Telecoms. Does this not give you an advantage that these players will never even mention again? Yes. So, uh, Liquid is our current company. Yes. But it gives us absolutely no advantage because, according to Portia's laws and regulations, mm -hmm. when LTZ, Liquid Telecom, is a wholesale, they sell to Low Africa, they sell to Frampo, they sell to where they must to buy it. Whatever price they sell is the same price. So, exactly. so exactly. there is no Even though they are a parent company. Even though they are a parent company, but when they sell them to us, it's at the same price. Because they can't sell it to us at a less price. Otherwise, it becomes uh, unfair. Yeah. Exactly. So, we get at the same price. So, the competition field is, uh, is the same. So, anyone can go and say, I want to buy uh, five. Yeah, I want to buy a uh, And then you know, they'll do it for you, but at the same price that we get. So, there's no unfair advantage. Interesting, interesting. Probably maybe just before we shut down this uh, very insightful interview, I think we may just want to run through after the $39 package for the end layer which might make. What, what other packages do we have? There is uh, one for $89, for 89. Uh, that's kept at 30 gigs. It used to be 20, now it's 30 gigs. Okay. Then there's one for 149, it's kept at, uh, it's unlimited. And then there's another one for business and home. So we have six packages. The last one's in ten, which is at 339. But if you go to our website or Facebook, they are all listed there. They are all listed there. Yes. I think maybe, maybe to us also because there's another challenge, especially on the cap and, and on the cap lim limits that you actually get as a subscriber there. Uh, I think for, for especially what from what we've managed to gather previously with the WiMAX service. You know, when it comes in with a bit of unlimited internet, when you do not necessarily specifically say that you're going to be kept at this rate, are we not going to be also having this same problem, especially on congestion? Are we going to be guaranteed on the 5 megabytes uh, download and the 1 megabytes upload? How guaranteed are these speeds? And are, are they going to be also shared speed? At, 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 at what bandwidth contention are we going to be having on a certain area? You know, these speeds are guaranteed. Mm -hmm. And uh, we always encourage our customers to always check. You know, once a month, check your speeds. See if they are actually up to what you signed up for. If they are not, call us and we send our guys to see what the issue is. Mm -hmm. And we will have people calling in, they say, oh, my speed is not correct. But they are very rare calls. Mm -hmm. So you still, a lot of people are happy with themselves. Mm -hmm. Very happy. And also sometimes it depends on the time of day that you log in and so forth. There are sometimes when it's busy period, you know. So it might slow down a little bit. But it doesn't mean that your speeds have you know, been changed in the system. They stay the same, but uh, wherever there's congestion, sometimes you have to, you know, it's a give and take. Mm -hmm. But most of the speeds are up to what they are. Those, those so are, they can actually expect those kind of high absolutely. speeds? Absolutely. You expect those are eight, 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 eight. Absolutely. If you don't get those high speeds, just call us and we test. Yeah. We will send our guys there. And they'll do their checks and see what happens and they'll correct it. Okay. Yes. I think maybe just before we quickly just round up, like on, 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 on the most contentious issue of congestion and, and speed, because this is what people are actually going to be getting. I, I think for Zoho in any other player, when they usually come in the, into the market, say, I think we have a problem with, with this issue that we do get super fast speed, but with time we end up getting special issues of people being shared on a certain uh, uh, bandwidth and then we bandwidth with contention and then the internet speeds they also drop. Currently, how, if we can even have a figure, how is your subscriber best like and, and, and how, do you, how do you hope that it's going to move with such a promotion? And do you have enough uh, infrastructure to actually take care of these issues of payment condition? Yeah, that's the advantage of 